What is good, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Hype Report. Um, I hope you're all blessed. Now, today, I have someone who's very special in my heart. We came up together on the TikTok scene. Um, his name, or he's firstly, he's a big sneakerhead, YouTuber, TikToker, content creator, and big collector at Sneakernomics. What's good, bro? Hello. Hey, <laughs> How's things, man? Yeah, everything's good, man. Thanks for having me. We now need to act like we haven't had any conversation prior to the initial recording. Yeah, we've used everything up now. To, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's nothing to talk about. So yeah, tell, tell the people who don't who don't who don't know who you are what, a little bit about you and what you stand for, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Kilda to everybody. Hello, uh, my name is Jordan, and you might know me as Sneakonomics. I come from a small place called. Um, which is Wellington in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And yeah, I live here in London and I make sneaker videos and love talking about sneaker culture and am really delighted to, to be here. Yeah, man. That, that's when, when did you actually come over here then? We've had this conversation before, but I actually can't remember. Yeah, I moved to London in 2007. Nice. Yeah, and I kind of came over... On a bit of a whim, I didn't really have much in the way of plans. It was uh, just a chance to travel and see the world. And I've basically been here ever since. Yeah. Do you yeah. like it? Yeah, I, lo I love it here. I'm lucky to have Scottish ancestry on my father's side. So I have a British passport. So if you're watching uh, <laughs> customs, don't worry. I'm, I'm here. Good, I'm man. legit. I'm, I'm <laughs> cool. Good. It's fine. Um, no need to you know, dig into the credits of the video. I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, so I've, I've got the the British passport and I love it. Yeah, London's a wicked place to be. It used to be anyway, uh, a really awesome, well, it still is to be fair, uh, great launch pad to see the rest of the world. And there's a lot of opportunity. It's an exciting city, lots of energy. And yeah, I'm a, yeah, I, I love it here for sure. Yeah, it's sick, man. Now, going back a little bit into your earlier days, what got you into sneakers? Was there a particular shoe or any particular moment in your life? Yeah, it was a Sunday, 1989. <laughs> um, growing up in uh, New Zealand, I think this is a story that a lot of people from the 80s and 90s will sort of resonate with, mm. is watching people like Michael Jordan play basketball, that was hugely influential. Not just uh, Michael Jordan, but also players like Larry Johnson, um, you know, Patrick Ewing. These were guys that as a 90s kid or growing up in the 80s and 90s used to idolize these guys. And so one of the big ways that I got into sneakers was just through watching and playing basketball. And MJ for me was the guy, still is the guy, but one of the shoes that really got me into sneakers or got me fascinated with sneakers was the Converse Aero Jam. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Sort of had this freaky aqua colorway, really high top, chunky shoe. But that shoe we couldn't get when I was growing up. And as much as I'd have loved to have owned a pair as a kid, it never came off for me. So I always wanted it, could never get it mm. type of thing. And it was the same thing with the Reebok pump. Uh, in the early 90s, that was the shoe. Yep. And people kind of forget that in the early 90s, Nike was still establishing themselves as one of the top brands as you know in the basketball scene and the athletic scene and so in the early 90s it wasn't really that much about Jordans as much as it was about other brands like Reebok as well as you know, Converse so that was it man the Converse Aero Jam the Reebok pump those are two sneakers that as a kid I was infatuated with and that sort of sparked my love for kicks is there a big difference in sneaker culture between New Zealand and since you've been over here in the UK that you've noticed? Yeah, it's it's kind of similar in a number of respects and then different in others. Mm. Uh, I was home recently and I got a chance to catch up with a couple of uh, sneaker heads that are quite well known back in Aotearoa and I was chatting to them about this. And New Zealand's culture is very heavily influenced by American culture. Musically, there's a lot of people that take inspiration from different uh, you know, hip hop musicians. So hip hop, street culture is very influential in the New Zealand's music scene. And then obviously something that goes along with the music culture is the fashion and mm. also sports culture. 
So there are a lot of similarities in New Zealand sneakerhead culture, but I would say there's definitely a, a bias or there's definitely a heavy amount of influence that comes from the American athletic scene. So Jordan's really popular. Um, these days, it's sort of mirroring the culture in America where it's a little bit more like varied and versatile. But yep. yeah, I, I would say New Zealand sneaker culture is very similar to American sneaker culture in a number of ways. And have you, have you noticed um, a big change in the sneaker culture in general over the years? Because obviously, respectfully, you're an, an, a more experienced in this game than I am. Way more experienced, Very respectfully, of course. Um, so have you, 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 would have, you would have grown up with, with way more experience than I have. So have you noticed things that are, I don't know, maybe not just like trends, because obviously they, they come and go, things change over the years, but maybe like the core foundations of anything's changed? Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of trends come and go over the years. And then there's a few things that have remained classic and iconic and have enjoyed surges in popularity. Um, if I think back, just using maybe like the last 10 years as an example of just how quickly and how dynamic uh, the space is with regard to trends and stuff. If you go back 10 years ago to like 2014, you're in the midst of a, like a Nike boom in terms of like Flyknit yes, technology. Yes. So you guys will probably remember like all the Flyknit races, the Flyknit yeah. runners um, that had also had heaps of influence on basketball shoes, particularly shoes like you know, the, the later model Kobe's, like the Kobe mm. nines and stuff like that. Uh, Lunalon technology, all of these things could kind of you know, be pointed at as representing a 2014 coming into 2015 era. And one of the big reasons why all that stuff was popular was obviously because of Yeezy or you know, Kanye at the time. And then you have this period of dominance from Adidas and the Boost technology. Yes. After the Boost technology, you get into this era of uh, collabs where every other day, every other week, there's a notable collab. So just marking out the last 10 years, you can point to a few big changes in the landscape of sneaker culture. And then if you go back a further 10 years before that, it's the same sort of stuff, man. Yeah. You know? But what's constant is the fact that everything is cyclic. Let's talk about the Boost era, because that's when I got into it, like yeah. first really, and I was like blown away with, at, at the time I wasn't blown away with the technology, but I know I, I, I kind of deep down probably was, if that makes sense. I was like, mm. wow, wearing the Ultra Boost is insanely comfortable. Why is it like, what is this shoe? Uh, and obviously that was down to the, how it was made and manufactured and, and all, all that kind of stuff. Did you like that era? Because that was a yeah. start of a, probably a, a big entry point for a lot of people, especially my age. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, what's, what's quite funny about that era now is it's looked back on with a lot of heartfelt nostalgia in yes. current content. And it's kind of crazy to me to think, wow, are we looking back? Was it that far? <laughs> was it that long ago now? Was it that far back? Like, I can't believe, you know, are we going to start getting Ultra Boost retros now yeah. type of thing, you know? Like, and then, yeah, so it just reminds you of how quickly time flies, basically. But listen, I loved that era. Um, that era for me was awesome. It's, it was cool for me because that was one of the first pretty much was the first time that I was actually in a position to spend money on shoes. Nice. Because for most of my 20s and early 30s, I didn't have any money, yeah. really. Or the money that I did have, I was spending on traveling. Yes, yeah, And yeah. so I didn't really have much money or time to be able to yeah, put into sneakers and enjoy sneakers. But the Ultra Boost era was awesome. I love the, uh, love the technology, love the comfort. And that particular shoe was, it was, it was something that really vibed with my style. Uh, and my style is fairly non-existent, but I like gym athletic wear and just being able to, you know, rock some shorts and, you know, a, a baggy hoodie or something and be comfortable in some ultra boosts, feeling like I had a fit, even though I was either coming or going from the gym was really cool for me, man. What, what, what do you think about, um, because because no no one really, well, some people still wear Ultra Boost, but the, the cool kids don't wear Ultra Boost anymore, right? Yeah. However, on running, whatever, or the cloud sneakers that are super, super comfy, uh, yeah. are very, very similar. Yeah. Do you think it's kind of recycled a little bit? 
You mean like the on running technology yeah. or the clouds or whatever well, well, they've got well, going the, on? The, the, yeah, I mean, the, the cloud kicks in general are very, I mean, they're very, they're, not, they're obviously very different in terms of how someone designs them, but I guess they, they serve a similar purpose and their USP mm. is that they're insanely comfortable. And for sure, they're probably a running shoe while Ultra Boost isn't traditionally a running kick. Yeah. But there, I mean, there is, there, is, there is similarities there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of brands that are coming through at the moment that have this USP that focuses on comfort. And I think a lot of people, especially in the last two or three years, have kind of gotten out of the habit of wearing, let's face it, pretty uncomfortable shoes, Jordan 1s, Jordan 4s, and getting into you know, the New Balances, the, the Asics, these Ons, or Hooker is another one. Yes. Um, you know, that's another brand that's really coming through and you know it's it's just repackaging the same stuff that we know and love and yeah credit to these brands for picking up on you know i guess it's pretty obvious what to do uh, you make a comfortable shoe you make it in some nice uh, colorways and then you make some of it somewhat limited and then you've got a recipe for success man yeah and then so after the ultra boost we kind of had a that kind of led people into the yeezy People were into Yeezys before then, obviously, but yep. then it, Yeezy really hit like the mainstream, like they really, really blow up. I would say maybe what, 2016 onwards, 2017 maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think it can be understated just how huge that Agreed. shift in yeah. sneaker culture was because of Yeezy. Um, you know, love him or hate him in 2024, you can't deny the man's influence. And I feel like, yeah, when he came out with, I think it was the 750 Grey first. I think that was the first year that dropped in 2015. And then the Turtle Doves came off the back of that. Mm. That was just a crazy sneaker at the time. Because um, obviously we'd had his Nike models that did really well. And they were hella limited. And then he came out with these 750s, like a shoe with a zip. Yeah. You know, and the, the fits like, people what? were getting off. <laughs> yeah, like it was... <laughs> crazy to think that this was uh yeah this was the trend and, and the way that they marketed it and the way that he rolled it out was genius they yeah. were really limited they were incredibly hard to get your hands on you had people lining up outside you know Foot Locker, oxford streets or whatever and people would be like what are you lining up for and you'd be like oh, i'm lining up for some shoes and they'd be like well you're lining up to buy some shoes you're like no i'm lining up to put my name in a raffle yeah. to potentially buy some shoes people are like what are you doing man you're not even getting the shoes you know we guaranteed the shoes yeah. how long have you been in the line for yeah two hours now <laughs> you know it's and and that was just crazy marketing and really successful and obviously the success that Ye was able to achieve with that boost technology putting his own spin on it enabled other people like pharrell with the NMDs, for example, yes, to you, remember, yeah. you know pop off as well. The, it, yeah. They were crazy. Wow, you, that, they, they were a staple that era as well. Completely forgot about them. You can't talk about the Ultra Boost era without mentioning the NMD. Mm. Because if you look back now at the NMD and you think, would I wear that in 2024? I think most people would be like, nah, man, those are cringy. But at the time, you know, the black ones or the yellow ones, they were selling for the north of a thousand pounds. And then you had the, the purple ones and then you know, loads of crazy different gradient colorways on them. And yeah, it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. bizarre. I always wanted the tangerine ones, but I could never quite justify paying for them. So, so sometimes I go on Depop now and just browse them, uh, look, look at them. And, um, and yeah, they're obviously... Nothing, yeah, like yeah, pennies, yeah. bro. I mean, compared, yeah. and I sit there because that was again. That was when I was literally first getting into it, and I looked yeah. at these shoes. I would have been, you know, I was literally really young. I would have been a teenager, like 13, 14 when this was kind of popping off. Yeah. And I would have sat there. I was like, bro, that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. And then at school, it was a massive thing because no one had any. No one had. Any, no one had that money. Even if you were a rich mm. family, you weren't rocking around in NMDs or yeah. any kind of ultra boost at the time because it was just they were so expensive. I mean, ultra boost weren't that weren't you know maybe the resale peak probably at like 250 300 at times yeah but then yeah obviously we had that had the kind of yeezy 350 wave zebra's release 2017 i want to say yep 2017 yeah i think it Towards was the end of that. i think it was like end of feb or something like that yeah actually i have a um have a bit of a heartbreaking story to tell about the zebras um yes you, you, you sometimes see this there's this viral video that's kind of recycled itself and been reused by a number of sneaker pages and creators of this guy who goes in to a sneaker shop with like a mountain of hype kicks to trade for a pair of zebras. And the whole video plays out where, you know, he's he just can't wait to get his hands on these zebras. Mm. The clerk is like totting up all of these pairs and he's like, yeah, we've got these, we've got these, we've got these. 
And he's like, you know, we're at like $1,400 or something right now. We still got a little bit to go. And the guy's <laughs> like, oh, man, really? We've still got more to go. Oh my gosh. And they were trying to sell the zebras for, yeah, something like $1,800. Oh, um, and I have a similar story because I actually traded about five or six pretty, I remember, yeah, I remember yeah, this, pretty, yeah. yeah, pretty tasty pairs yep. for a pair of zebras. And I was so pleased with myself. I was so happy. I had the zebras on foot. The day I got them, I was rocking them in the gym. I was enjoying them. And then, you know, a few months later, they restocked. The value went down and I became... Um, because I'd been a little bit, you know, show off and yeah, a little bit yeah, proud of myself, time, yeah, yeah, people yeah, were yeah. quite happy to remind <laughs> me that I had uh, massively overpaid for them. Um, given how, how much trade. do you reckon you have value? What do you reckon it came to initially? I mean, at, at the time, at the time, I was probably into them like about a thousand pounds, I want to say. The stuff that I've traded probably had a slightly higher market value yep. at the time. Um, you know, kicks are always priced according to the moment, yes, uh, as 100%. we've just been discussing. Yes. So at the time, I probably traded the better part of, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 quid, more or less, for this pair of zebras. So, yeah, man, I have fond memories. If you, of if you tell it to a TikTok kid now, they'll probably have a breakdown, man, like that's Yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it is crazy to think, but... You know, listen, I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm above the hype or that I'm uh, nah, beyond being 100%. influenced as a sneakerhead or as a collector. You want the limited stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. You want yeah. the stuff that not Human everybody nature, has. Human nature, man. Yeah, Human yeah, nature. yeah, yeah. That's it. We're, we're driven by the stuff that we can't have. And so at the time, there was a big to-do made about the Zebras because they were supposedly the most limited 350 V2. It's a really accessible colorway, easy to wear. I was working in a gym at the time, and so the whole idea of wearing Yeezy 350s in the gym was like a staple, right? Yeah. You know, it's such yeah, a comfy, yeah. easy shoe to wear. And so I just had to have them, and I was willing to trade out a whole bunch from the collection. Yeah, they, they are one of my favorite shoes of all time, purely because I remember just, again, that was when I was into it then. I was into that this kind of space a little bit then, yeah. and I was like, wow. I'm gonna, well, I, was like, I saw that, I was like, this is my dream shoe. Obviously, it's not in general, but at the time, I was like, I need it. I need it. Yeah, Eventually, yeah. I got a pair, and then I probably did exactly what you did. But this was a few, few, maybe a few releases down the line of restocks. Probably, a, literally, only a couple. But I paid a good, a good whack for them, and especially a lot when I would have been like, I don't know, seventeen, mm. and um, yeah, and then flex them quite a lot. Yeah, quite yeah. a lot. I went through that it's era. Cool shoe. It's yeah, cool yeah, shoe. crazy shoe. Yeah. What is the the most expensive pair you've ever purchased? Yeah. So the, the most. The most I've ever paid for a pair of trainers is 1,500 pounds. Yep. So whatever, 1,700, 1,800 American. It's about 3,000 New Zealand dollars. And I paid that for the Red Octobers. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I bought a pair of Red Octobers. This would have been, oh, maybe like 2016, 2017. And this was in a time where reselling was nowhere near as prevalent as it is today. It was in a time where you could still find steals on Depop, you could still find steals on eBay. The only problem was that there was no authentication service, and so you had to pretty much go into these deals having done your own due diligence. Mm. So I became a bit of a pro at legit checking Red Octobers yeah. to the point where I had three or four uh, leads on different pairs of Red Octobers with varying degrees of confidence assigned to each <laughs> pair as to how legit I thought they were. And yeah, I ended up negotiating with a, uh, a young man who met up with me in person. He had the original Flight Club receipts. Nice. I already had the Yeezy 2 Plats as well as the Solar Red pair. So I had two authentic pairs on hand to compare them in good, hand. Good. And we did the deal, man, 1,500 pounds for nice. the Red Octobers, which, which and they were clean. A very, very good price. Crazy to think that, yeah, now, yeah. seven years later, that is an absolute steal. Like, how, how much are they crazy. worth now? Like six? Bro, Five, I've, I've seen people, uh, I mean, okay, so what, is, what do they go for? I mean, they go for crazy money, man. Like, I've seen people try to sell the size that I had, which was a, I think like a US 10. Uh, I've seen those go for in really good condition. Yeah, over 8,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. It depends on the market. I think the US market is probably a little bit more 
sort of receptive to that pair. In the UK, I've seen people struggle to sell similar size pairs for 6,000, 8,000. Mm. So it all depends on condition. But the point is I, I bought them for 1,500. That's a steal. I think if you saw a pair come up on the market these days for 1,500, you'd just oh. scroll on automatically. Like, yeah. They're fake. Uh, yeah, 100%. Even, you, you, know, you, you would, you would you'd be too, you'd be like, uh, no chance, bro. Yeah, but no seven chance. years ago, those types of pairs were out there, you know, like Fragment Jordan 1 Highs. You could find them for like a sneaky steal here and there. If you were willing to compromise on new and buy used, you could find these types of uh, steals and deals that long ago. But these days, it's a little bit trickier. Do you still have the, have the Red Octobers? No, no. I ended up selling them in 2019. I sold a bunch from my collection in 2019. My, my missus and I, we, we bought a house. And so part of facilitating that was trying to dredge up some quick cash yeah, and yeah. having shoes like that on hands was very helpful yeah it, that is making, quick cash in yeah. making that happen yeah yeah so I'd, as much as i'd like to still have them in the collection uh nah no nah, i had to i had to flip them off um, how, how much did you get them how much did you flip them for well so th here's another embarrassing story is <laughs> <laughs> Keeps I coming, man. so i didn't actually sell them for what I probably could have got them, uh, what I probably could have gotten out of them. So I sold them for around about three and a half thousand pounds. Nice. Yeah. So about three and a half thousand. I sold them to an American, uh, and he was so keen on them. Um, yeah, it was about four thousand American. So or maybe like yeah, three and a half thousand American or something like that. So nearly out about three thousand pounds. So yay, I made uh, a nice tidy profit on them. Certainly not going to turn the nose up at a fifteen hundred quid profit. But yeah. You know, like given what they go for now, yeah, it kind of pains me a little bit that I didn't hang on to them because I probably could have found that money from other parts of my collection. You know, those are the types of pairs that hindsight, though, man, especially with sneakers, it's always it's, it's yeah. a killer. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, yeah. And no, no. People tell you they they can they know the market. Not impossible, man. Yeah. Impossible. Sneaker blind ranking, boy. Um, we have a bunch of shoes coming up. I think five, right? And then you need to put them in a, in a top five, obviously. But you obviously don't know what shoe's coming next. So you've got to pick very carefully. So we're going to start off with uh, Jordan. Do you want to introduce it? So this is the Air Jordan 3 right here. I think this is the uh, infrared colorway. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, some hits of red there, which is quite nice, man. I, yeah. I don't mind this. This is, is, a, this is nice. a nice shoe. This is a clean shoe. I remember when these came out. Uh, listen, I'm biased to the Air Jordan 3, so I would be inclined to put these at number one. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Bro, you are just going straight down the middle. I've just ruined it, probably. Hey, we could do uh, another take if we <laughs> need to. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. And then uh, ones. Uh, ones, yeah. Okay, so I've not really been the biggest fan of ones over the years. I used to cop them you know, on sale back in the day. Yeah. Um, not very comfortable. They've obviously had their moments. I'm going to put Jordan ones at number four. Wow, <laughs> bro, you're, this is this is okay. Okay, so we've got Hot threes take. at the top, ones fourth. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Three fifties. Oh man, this is a hard one because I love the three fifty for the early days. Uh, I hate this one here. Yeah, this is this is this is one the new the new of the whatever. Yeah. This is, okay, yeah, so, this is old but, actually. They are incredibly comfortable. I do have a soft spot for them. I do prefer them to Jordan ones. So I'm gonna put these at three. That's it. I would go with that as well. Yeah. Oh, is it, oh Vapor Max. Vapor Max? Yes. Wow. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, straight off the F. That's a five. That's a, <laughs> that's a six, actually. I mean, that's <laughs> off the list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these were these were, these were were brought out one. It's kind of counter the... Uh, I feel like we've talked about Ultra Boost. Apologies time. to the majority of the Utes in London. Um, <laughs> I saw about eight mandem on the way here wearing those, so apologies. And then they had 2002 Rs. They look like the 2002 Rs, yep. <laughs> Uh, so they're left, what? right? Two. Two, that's it. Oh, man, okay. So what we got? So we got Freeze. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Freeze. Freeze, top spot. Okay, it's a bit of an L list. Sorry, guys. Second, we have New Balance 2002 Rs. Third, Yeezy 350s. Yep. Fourth, Jordan 1s. And then fifth or, or sixth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth yeah. is the, the Vapor Max. Yeah, apologies to the Mandem. The, the Mandem. <laughs> Um, is there a shoe in your collection that's gone up in value quite a lot? One of the shoes that's probably gone up the most, I mean, I don't really think, when I think about my collection, I think about shoes that I have, I don't tend to think too much about um, like values, but if I think about some of the high heat pairs that I have, it's probably the Yeezy 2 Plats. 
so I have the platinum pair, which I think was the first pair to come out mm. in uh, 2012, and then it was the Solars, and then it was the Red Octobers, and I actually got those for a pretty good deal. I did a trade for those, and this was the guy that I ended up doing the trade for the Zebras for, uh, which we spoke about, and so I ended up getting the plats for a little over 600 pounds, uh, and they're probably in the market these days, given they're like a US 11, maybe, I don't know, like, 1500 pounds 2000 pounds something like that so that's yeah I, I like them a lot they're really nice yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I, th I think they're definitely something i'm probably probably eyeing up i, I literally I, a bit off topic but as as, as i've kind of I've grown up with tiktok but like over the last couple of years like initially when i start get got into tiktok and if i ever thought to myself that i was going to like not get to where i am but like have like more disposable income to spend on shoes and clothes yeah. i thought i'd be buying up everything every pair of, ever but I, now i've got older i've kind of matured and it's like i actually go back to nostalgia buy mm -hmm. pairs that i couldn't afford back in the day yeah. as opposed to buying stuff that might be good investments or stuff that i don't know is like really well respected i just yeah. tend to buy i don't know i don't yeah, know that's the cool thing about sneakers is that they remind you of a time H right 100 and for people my age a lot of the uh, nostalgia is heavily preyed upon by these companies, you know, like Nike and Jordan brand yeah. know what they're doing yeah. when they're pulling out these OG retros. They've been keeping us starved on certain models and certain variations like the military blues, for example. So yes. they know what they're doing. Um, you know, people my age now who couldn't afford them back in the day can now afford them now. Love that nostalgia, love the idea of picking up stuff from a certain period in time. And so that's why we get what we get. But that's what I like about the used market, that's what I like about the sneaker market is if you miss out on a recent release or you know, you've got some money and you want to have a look around, you can find pairs from back in the day that remind you of a certain time. A little bit like the Yeezy stuff, you know. I yep. can't see myself going out there and buying up 350s again. But yeah. I, I did see a pair of those human race NMDs recently for like a steal. And I was like, bro, I would just like to get them just to like finally have them. Yeah, even yeah. Even though they're completely off no, trend I agree. and not I, hype, you know? Yeah, I completely agree. Now on the subject of, I guess, value in shoes, reselling is a very uh, big topic within the community. It's, it's a huge industry worth a crazy amount of money on that, that post market, that secondary market. Yeah. Is reselling dead in 2024? Yeah, well, yes and no. I think, Reselling as a like a in the broader sense is if you're going to compare it to like the, the 2020 2021 yes. boom, yes. Um, where every other sneaker release coming out could potentially net you some bread. Nowadays, you've got to be a little bit more tactical, you've got to be a little bit more strategic, and you can't be so flippant with you know purchasing certain things. So there are things that are reselling. I guess the margins are smaller. You know, Much com smaller. companies yep. have raised up the retail prices, yes. which are, you know, putting a squeeze on margins. Uh, competition is way more fierce these days. So, yeah, it's it's not the same characters that are just hoarding the same sort of stock. So, in a certain sense, reselling is dead. You know, broadly, but. It's still alive and well. I mean, you still the the Drake shoes they dropped today. They sold yes. out really quick. Yep. People are going to be making a little bit of money on those. The you know fresh goods one thousands. Like every other week, there's still a sneaker that you can make a little bit of money on. It's just the capacity to make big margins has you know, diminished somewhat. Yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago, it was almost impossible to keep up with any profitable release or uh, well, prof mm. profitable releases because there was so many. Yeah. I mean, you, you you only had to look at what Nike did with the pandas. I mean, the, and, and and the pandas were dropping. I don't know every other Thursday, yeah, and they yeah. were they would they would they would move for one fifty, you know, straight after, and they would drop drop on the Nike app. People would get I don't know, 10, 20 pairs on multiple accounts, yeah, and then they would go and move them for you know, fifty pound a piece, which is crazy. And bearing in mind, a lot of these guys are young mm. guys and kids, and they're just balling of Panda Dunks, yeah, and like the ordinary dunk hype was just absolutely unbelievable for reselling because people would just buy up a a neutral toned dunk yeah. or one with a little bit of nice color in as long as it wasn't i don't know like the team reds or whatever they're called like yeah. i don't know any ordinary dunk that was wearable yeah boom i think 150 the, um, 160 do you know what i mean i think the realization for me that reselling was getting out of control or it was in a place that i'd never envisaged it going 
was when I saw Jordan one mids yes. reselling. Yes. I was like, where am I? You know, yeah. I felt like I'd woken up in a, in, a, <laughs> in a crazy dream, you know, like I was looking at the market and I saw, you know, like wants to buy posts, you know, like on Facebook groups or whatever, like people like I want to buy, you know, I need five pairs of these, this Jordan one mid. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? We're, we're reselling mids now? Like, and this was obviously, yeah, I want to say like 2019, 2020, it wasn't every mid colorway, but you know, nice, you know, wearable Jordan one mids colorways when they yeah. were reselling, that's when I knew things were getting a little bit out of hand. That was wild. Yeah. yeah. I, f I feel like I, not, I don't want to blame everything on TikTok, not blame TikTok. But I don't want to talk about <laughs> TikTok's influence too much, but um, TikTok definitely had a massive influence on mids because they was, yeah. people made them look aesthetically really nice yeah. and they were appealing to a completely new audience as opposed to sneakerheads like yourself. Yeah. I imagine it was probably people who were entry level into shoes who yeah. wanted like, I don't know, the latest trending shoe, just like the average Joe wanted a, wanted a, they didn't care if it was a higher or a mid, they didn't know the difference, but they wanted yeah. it because it looked nice, you know? Yeah, no, the, you, you can't, uh, yeah, you can't underplay the influence that TikTok and IG and the short form content mm. has had on sneaker culture, you know, as a whole. Um, but yeah, that was pretty crazy when I saw the Jordan 1 mids, man. I was like, whoa, okay. What, what's, what's next for reselling then, like in the next, next year or two? I mean, like, like I said earlier, no one can predict the market really. Um, mm. Because it completely depends on stuff like stock numbers, hype, market, and external factors that we don't really, you know, we don't really know. Yeah, yeah. So, what, what is? Do you reckon it will, will it come back a little bit? Because at the moment it is quite low. I mean, it's still there's mm. it's, for, when people ask me, I get asked this all the time: is reselling dead? And the answer is always no. It's, it's you know, it's never. It's, it's if you're comparing it to peak, obviously it's yeah. completely different now. But if you're if you're if you're working hard at it, you can you can still resell kicks, man. You just got to know what you're doing a little bit, yeah. uh, and look look at used pairs, for example, as well. Maybe like maybe yeah. the dead stock retail stuff isn't what it used to be. But anyway, mm. what would you reckon's coming up with reselling? Yeah, it's it's a tricky one, just because of how turbulent the economic climate is worldwide right now. Um, you know, with people's bills jumping up, and with you know, cost of living, um, people don't have the same sort of money that they had to fritter away on some shoes. So I think in the short term, I, th I think it will continue to remain in this like contracting phase where you're going to get a few pairs here and there that are going to do really well. But you know, more broadly speaking, most stuff is going to sit and go on sale, which is great news if you're a collector. If you're someone that has been, you know, like shaking your fist at the air for the past few years because you haven't been able to cop a retro, yeah. uh, now is great because the stuff is sitting and you can probably cop it at the end of the season on sale. Um, but I do think at a certain point it will come back again, but probably not to the same extent that we saw in 2019, 2020, yeah. 2021. I feel like there were so many things that aligned for that market to just boom and explode. Uh, it'll be tricky to see a situation in which those that's true. same stars yeah, align that's true. again. That's true. I mean, you had yeah. obviously like the lockdown and people looking for new ways to bring in money. Yeah. People had furlough and they actually had more money in lockdown, yeah. um, which is a bit of a misconception. Yeah. Um, so they had like more disposable income to try reselling and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think a, a lot of people kind of forget that a lot of the buying in that time wasn't just from regular Joes. A lot of yes. the buying yeah. was from this new burgeoning resell community that were looking at holding and hoarding pairs with the idea of them going up in time or whatever and so the market just got massively inflated obviously as a yeah. result of a lot of newcomers that were keen to wear their shoes and enjoy being part of the latest trends but also a, a big influx of people that were looking to capitalize off that exact same thing so yeah bro it's it's contracting but i think yeah if, if you're savvy and if you uh, have your finger on the pulse and you know what's coming out and you know more or less where the trends are and where they're going and you can kind of get a feel for what people are thinking about certain shoes, you can still find ways to make some money doing it. Yes, no, for agreed. Sure. Now, Kanye, yeah. uh, a bit of a new era for him. He's doing yeah. his own thing. Did, yeah. did, you, did you buy the Yeezy pods? <laughs> I didn't. Nah, I didn't. Um, yeah, I... I don't know, like from a content creation standpoint, I probably missed yes. a bit of a trick there. Because well, there's no point, bro, because mine haven't even arrived. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. They went viral. I know a lot of people did really well with content, uh, getting them in, trying them on, doing the whole wear test thing. So yeah, from a content standpoint, I probably should have gotten them in because it would have been fun to make some videos. Um, but 
Yeah, I, ca I can't say I'm that fanatical of the aesthetic. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, not, 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 not something I'd be into wearing myself. Yeah, I, 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 yeah they're definitely, I definitely bought them for content. But I also purchased yeah. um, a couple of, like, he had did some blanks, didn't he? Like zip-up stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they released on the Super Bowl weekend, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, that's that was right. Because that yeah. was his commercial that he yeah. did. And I think they sold, like, 570,000 items. Yeah. Which is insane yeah. yeah and mine i understand why now mine have not been shipped out because it's yeah yeah you know, it it's, seems like they probably oversold a bit because yeah I'm making I've, them right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of reports that people have been waiting some people have just given up on it a lot of people's stuff has been landing in the past couple of weeks and there's you know, a lot of people are complaining about the fit and stuff i've seen a few people rock some of the pieces where i, I think they look okay i think yeah. it looks fine I, I, look i mean for 17 pounds or, yeah, or 20 man. bucks yeah 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 you know you've got to sort of tip the cap to him in the sense that he wanted to democratize fashion yeah he wanted to bring uh, his type of look to the market at an affordable price he tried doing it with the gap it didn't come off he always wanted to do it with adidas and it never quite came yeah, off for obvious be, reasons yeah. so you know like fair play to him from that front um bringing his product to markets and making it accessible financially i think that's cool. yeah I, I agree i think a lot of people forget about it he, he's always wanted to do sell stuff basically really cheap he's yeah. made it made wanted to want it wanted because the, the easy gap hoodies that he released that i that they, they released like 80 90 dollars something like that maybe a little bit less but he wanted them to release like like 20 quid like yep. 25 quid right yep. they never did i imagine because gap i don't i don't know why i'm not sure the ins and outs i know there was loads of stuff about them but yeah, that was a crazy hoodie. Have you, did you ever have yeah. one? No, no, no. I lived the the Yeezy Gap hoodie era vicariously through <laughs> you, bro. It's yeah, just that, the blue hoodie. That was uh, <laughs> that was when I started. Well, that was when I first like started getting like comments on social media. Yeah, and uh, it was yeah. fucking weird. That was a weird time. What a that was weird a good time. Era. I, I feel bedroom, like my mum's bedroom, my parents' bed. That sounds weird. My parents' bedroom making like videos about Yeezy Gap hoodies. It was. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that that era was. You know, like, I think that was probably like the start of your, I want to say like blow up. That hoodie was a fantastic accessory to drive engagement. Yeah. I mean, if there was a piece that everyone wanted to just, it just became like a trend to yeah. comment on it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think that's, it's a bit of an asset in a way to have something like that, that people are going to just, by virtue of the fact that you've worn it in the video, are going to comment on it. Yeah. And so it's absolute fuel for the algorithm. There, there was people in like universities in the States, they were, go, they were making TikToks about them and, and the TikToks were like, they had their hood up and they were like, bro doesn't know I'm wearing a Yeezy Gap hoodie, I think it's an ordinary hoodie. And they were doing like crazy numbers, man. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah, such yeah, a bizarre yeah. time. But I get it, it was a, I mean, mate, the hoodie was mental. Like it was just, I've never had a hoodie like it. Like not like, yeah, it's not, it's just a hoodie, right? But it was very, very heavy, warm, yeah. thick. And I was like, bro, this is crazy. What is this, man? Like, yeah. But then plain, no branding at all. Do you think that hoodie could be credited with helping to usher in the crop era Ooh, that we're yeah. in? Probably. I mean, I, yeah. yeah, there was probably a, a multiple brands kind of around that time, but that, that, that really stepped on it. And because I remember was... when I first saw people rating the fits of the hoodie, everyone was like, "What's this fit?" Yeah, because it's it's, it's, it's this massive in. waistband, right? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, well, not waistband, but like that type of that hem thing. And then it's like really kind of quite tight. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it kind of crops over a little bit and it sags a little bit, but then it's like really high up. It's like. It took I, a while I, to get used to, for sure. I have some Yeezy pieces from when he was doing the designer stuff. Like, I've got um, a Yeezy Season 2 hoodie, which is just massively oversized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's long. Um, you know, depending on how in or out of shape I am, it either fits, <laughs> uh, it either fits really yes, well. Or yes, it, Yeah, it fits according to my body type. But, but basically, it's huge and it's long. Yeah. And this is kind of at odds with the current trend, yep. uh, which is very, you know, cinched and cropped and i just remember seeing that yeezy gap hoodie thinking wow this is a slight uh deviation from yeah. his you know the way he usually cuts his pieces but or, but yay yeah. back in like i don't know 2016 or whatever yay was always pictured wearing those kind of like rocket not rock not rocket tees but like indie tees where they were like long like, like almost yeah. down to his knees not, not yeah not, yeah not that long but like oversized yeah. really baggy and now it's Reversed. Completely, yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Now it's like a little bit of navel as uh, yeah. as a guy. It's, it's <laughs> like that's not even that bad. <laughs> well, what, what do you reckon? I know you're not massively into to what he's doing now, but what do you reckon is next for Yay? I mean, because he doesn't actually he doesn't own the Yeezy copyright, does he? 
Adidas so, do? Yeah, so, yeah, I think he owns the name. He has two patents uh, under his name. He owns a patent for the slides. Yep. Uh, and then he has a patent for like some weird heel, some yes, woman's shoe. Yes, yeah, yes, he owns yes. a patent for a heel. Uh, but all of the <laughs> other Yeezy designs are yeah, property of Adidas. Um, you know, and, and obviously a lot of the other designs that he's been part of have also had collaboration, well, you know, have, have had collaborative influence from people like Steve Smith or even Salehi Bamber or even like Jerry Lorenzo. So a lot of, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. A lot of his stuff has been uh, sort of like co-designs. But in terms of what's next for him, man, I, I think he's shown that through the storm that he's endured over the past couple of years. I mean, you could say it was self-inflicted, uh, I think justifiably. He's come through it, you know? Yeah, he, he's, he, he can do what he wants. He's come through it, yeah. yeah. I mean, he can... Sell what he wants, he'll yeah. sell. Yeah. He's, he's still got huge influence. His, yeah, his, his body of work, his music, his fashion, his designs, people, you know, uh, aren't forgetting about that. And people are staying loyal to him as questionable as some of his comments might be. I mean, all, okay, granted, a lot of people have jumped ship and a lot of people have fallen out of love with him. Yeah. But I think he's going to continue to do his thing in this affordable fashion space. Um, yeah, you've just got to kind of look at what he's been papped wearing. Yes. And then you can kind of get a sense for where he's going to be going. In the next year, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah, next yeah, year. Yeah. Always, then, always. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah always there's, there's a formula, right? Yeah. You know, and, it, and the formula applies to almost anyone and everyone, but Ye has been kind of the guy that you look at when it comes to formulating a marketing strategy around hocking trainers or hocking clothes. And so, yeah, if you want to see what the future of Yeezy looks like, you just got to kind of like look at what he's wearing. He's been rocking the, you know, like the rain jackets, um, you know, the the bare feet for a while, which is yeah, like, which is crazy, man. Yeah. The, the super tight legging type vibes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what he was thinking, uh, you know, going through his like 80s aerobics <laughs> instructor era or his uh, NFL football player minus yeah, the football yeah, minus the, pads the shoulder and shit. pads and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, weird, man. Yeah, he got, got into some interesting stuff in the summer. What do you think about the slides? Because actually, I saw you recently picked a pair up. Yeah, yeah. So I did pick a pair up, and I uh, so I, I didn't take part in the foam runner and the Yeezy slide no, I remember. Uh, trends. Yeah, I was kind of quite stoic <laughs> in uh, you know abstaining from that trends, almost like out of protest. Nah, yes. they're, they're, they're crap. You know what? I just couldn't believe. Yeah, I couldn't believe we were like. Tre slides were trending like what do you mean there's no brand in the tour yeah it is Sl weird it slides is weird are trending. i get that what? and then these foam runners you know they look like a yeah they look like some kind of like bread bin or some <laughs> like you know or the bread in the bin if it's ciabatta <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I didn't take part in it but i did get a pair in and i will say this man like the, the foam runners are pretty comfy but i i do think the comfort is overrated I do think it I is. Agree. The yeah, thing I agree. that got me about the foam runners is they've got the. Um, you obviously have got like the, the vag insert or whatever where you, you know, chuck in the foot, but because of the like the friction contact points, you just can't wear them with bare feet. And I wanted to wear them with bare feet, so I didn't find them that comfortable when I rocked them with bare feet. The slides were good. They I, I sized up and they were still a little bit tight on me, but I can I can understand it because. This whole era of foam footwear is just about being comfortable, right? And when you have the slides on and you or you have the foam runners on, it's it's just such an easy shoe to wear. Yeah, yeah. So I do applaud him for that because a little bit like maybe this cropped trend we were talking about, you could probably credit the foam runner and the slide with ushering in this new era of trending EVA foam footwear. So now Crocs are huge. I can't, I can't help but feel like Crocs popularity has been influenced somewhat by people's sympathy towards this EVA foam yeah. shoe trends. Um, 3D printed shoes, massive. I mean, every brand now have like their own foam runner. Yes. Or their own yeah, mule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or their own slide or whatever. And they're selling and they're moving units. And I feel like that was kind of the, the genesis of it in that slide trend anyway. I like the slides. Yeah. Foam runners, I think everyone, I, I, I can't, they, they don't really fit me. I've tried right. so many different sizes. I've tried a, yeah. a I'm a size nine traditionally. Yeah. I've tried a eight, a eight, nine, 10, 11. Right. None yeah. of them fit me. <laughs> now I think the new, I think they recently released a new colorway. Uh, quite, yeah. I don't know, a couple, maybe about a month ago. And apparently the sizing is a bit different. I, well, the only reason I, know that uh, is I saw, yeah, yeah. saw Elliot Page talk about it. Yeah. Um, 
Is he out? Are they granite? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It was like a sort of yeah, like a slate grey or. They're, but they all they all look like that. They've they've been yeah, colourways so many know. times. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what colourways. What when we have we we used to sell quite a lot on Kicksforce, and I would look at them and be like, some of them because some of them don't come with a box, right? Yeah. Because we sell like as cheap as possible, so we pick up ones about boxes sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't know what this is. I'm yeah. sitting there. I'm like, is this a sand colourway? Is it a I don't know, the other cream one, or is it a, yeah, a, a rock? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, he's taken like every sort of palette yes. from one color, and then he's just kind of like taken it one tone down, or he's you know pumped up the contrast one yeah, half notch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's a new colorway. But yeah, oftentimes yeah, you're like, is this a new colorway? Is this a restock? And then even if you see them side by side, you, it's still hard to distinguish them. Eh? Yeah, and I guess that does, but that does fit into him wanting them to be accessible by having yeah, like, yeah you know, if people can as many restocks as, as, as whatever yeah slides are cool i like slides i'm going to continue wearing them i'm going to buy buy a few up i yeah, think yeah. this summer um you can pick them up for so cheap man used as well yeah yeah so cheap so the last pair i got was a little bit they didn't fit great so i think the tact would be if they do come back out i'm not sure if they are or not it's kind of all up in the air no but i would probably go like yeah like a couple of sizes up and then just be comfortable with that the, yeah. the issue i've always found with a foam yeezys is that they just the sizing's all over the place so one release is here the next release is like there like in terms of sizing yeah. so like my i've got the pure colorway and i've worn them for like two years now really good and they 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 got a few like chunks out of them but yeah, in yeah. terms of like the cleanness you just wash you just wash them away yeah and they they fit really well and they're great but then i bought the um on yeezy day last year when they had a when they, yeezy day was like dead and buried but they re, they recovered it and they did yeah. it again when they were selling off all the, to try and make out that's like break even that year financially yeah they um they released the brown colorway and I had that it just it didn't it didn't fit very well so I I don't even know where I am there's been so many releases yeah. in between that I haven't really had to go for mm. I don't really know what size I am anymore it's just yeah crazy. it's a little bit like that with uh, New Balance I find sometimes New Balance you've got to go like a size up on a certain model sometimes you've got to size down sometimes they're true to size and you can't take the way one model fits and then apply it to another model, especially if you're going to buy it blind. So I've made that mistake before where yeah. I bought like a 1906R or a 2002R and I, I bought my normal like size up and then I did the same thing to the 992 and then I ended up having like, you know, room in there for a, you know, a party or something. Yeah. I ended up having to get rid of them because they just... They just weren't fitting. So it's a bit like that with New Balance too. I yeah. Find. So this is here today and gone tomorrow where we basically rank current and past sneaker silhouettes and trends and see if they're going to be well here today or if they're going to be fall out of trend. So uh, we've got the Adidas Samba up first, Jordan. What are we saying? Yeah, it's already gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Rishi has dead and buried it. Like, yeah, full yeah, on. yeah dug the grave and stomped on it yeah. so yeah they're, they're thanks rishi they're, they're 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 gone yeezy slides yeah gone <laughs> yeah. yeah don't leave me much room to work with yeah. here in terms of duration of this segment yeah but left yeah, yeah okay departed. fine <laughs> what, what about the jordan 4 silhouette yeah the jordan 4 is on its way out you, you, you really you know yeah. it's gonna yeah 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 it's it's on its way out uh listen i love the jordan 4 it's one of my favorite models i've got a pair on Right now, uh, I'm thankful that the trend is now going because it means that you know, I don't have to worry about having to pay crazy resale for yep. these pairs. But yeah, the Jordan Four. Are you still going to be gone. still going to be buying them as a collector? If the colorway is nice, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, what, we, you, what colors do we have? We have the military blue coming up. The military blue. That's a must cop. Uh, Recently released the cream and the gold. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the, the women's release. Yes, yeah, so very yeah, popular, yeah. that. Yeah, that's a nice colorway. Uh, yeah, really clean. The Vivid Sulfur are yes. dropping this yes. Saturday, I think. There's a Gorge Green colorway, I think, on the horizon as well. Um, and then potentially another SB collaboration this year. Yeah, the I've year. heard rumors of, of some, a few different colorways of the SB collab, including maybe even a Black Cat. Nice. Um, that would, yeah. God, that would, yeah, because that, that, that be was cool. one of the first colorways to actually, like literally 2020. Two maybe, yep. but the guy was skating. A, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That was that? Eric Costin. Yeah, he was seen in a in a sample pair. So I feel like that's a an SB four to look forward to. I yeah. mean, that would obviously go nuts, and that would be crazy. That, that would be would, beautiful. That would be an exception to the claim that Jordan fours are out because you know certain they colorways are, are yeah. still going to be popular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, MX TNs depends where you live. That's uh, very true. It's yeah. a very geographical in on demand sneaker. Yeah, it depends where you live. If you're you know, down in Australia, shout out to everyone watching down in Australia. 
Uh, TNs are like a staple. I know yeah. in different parts of Europe as well, even like parts of uh, the UK. There's certain places up north yeah, that are north obsessed with uh, TNs. <laughs> the, the lady behind the camera is, is a big TN fan. Yeah. So I think TNs are yeah, here to stay, but they're not going to. Yeah. I don't think they're going to like blow up. Um, no, I, they're, 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 they're going to stay, from, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the new Air Max DN. Yeah, the, the MXDN, look, it's early in the, in the life cycle. We just got the shoe. I think there are parts of it that look quite aesthetically pleasing. You know, these little that, that air units that they've, you know, shown off in a slightly different way yes. on the side. Um, yeah, did, look, did you like them? I haven't tried them. Uh, I, I've tried one on in store and they, they felt okay. Uh, I, th I think it's, it's, it's a nice shoe. Nothing really bad to say about it, but I don't think it's going to pop off. No, I think I think there's too many core Air Maxes before it for someone to go and spend 155, 160 quid on it. I think um, yeah. some colors are nice. That color is nice. That silver, yep. th 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 that's cool. And um, I saw that Supreme did like a friends and family silver bullet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw, saw uh, yeah, Clint was uh, well, He posted those, it a day before Supreme was about to drop. Them, yeah. So I was like, oh, they're going to fucking, this is going to be great. It'd be great for content, man. Yeah. But it didn't drop, unfortunately. So yeah, there's, I agree. Yeah, that it's it's a difficult one. I, I don't think they, they're not going to be gone tomorrow but they're definitely not going to be you know a long I'd term. expect to see like a couple of a couple of models or a couple of colorways do quite well but I think broadly speaking they've been received somewhat underwhelmingly okay yeah okay. I, don't, I don't think they were made the splash that they were gonna make yeah um, if yeah. you look at like the resale of the Supremes if you look at the fact that you know they're, they're pretty much set in most retail stores you go into and you know all the different colorways I don't think they've you know, kind of captivated everybody like they'd have hoped. Yeah, um, I, I hated the the only the, the colorway I've got is the worst one. It's the gradient purpley. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got, yeah, I got yeah, EA yeah. on that, and I was like, yes. "Oh, this is great!" And I got the notification for. It. I was like, "Yes," and then <laughs> no, is the shit color? And uh, not the glides. Yeah, nice shoe, nice shoe. I can see these uh, sticking around. Yeah. I think I think with the influence they've got behind it, I think they're going to stay for a yeah. little while. It's a cool shoe, and it's inspired by a really cool shoe as well. You know, the the Jason Kids from '95. It's got, yeah, it's it's got a good look about it. It's I've seen a lot of people get off some really cool fits. Yeah, Th this type of a colorway is you know obviously a bit of a no brainer. It's, it's it's a black and a white. So yeah, I think the Nocta Glides semi hot take i think that's his best shoe to date actually yeah no i agree yeah. i think the the they 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 look a little bit futuristic futuristic which i think the dn's tried to capture that a little bit but i think the nocta yeah. does it way better yeah agreed um, and yes on cloud or whatever they're called on cloud <laughs> running whatever yeah. this new wave of comfortable running shoes yeah so okay so they they're going nowhere these are a staple if you're age my my age and above, uh, you probably already have two or three pairs. Uh, they they've got a good market because obviously it's like a Swiss shoe. They're kind of marketed towards the type of people that like to lead an outdoor lifestyle yes. or like to go out walking. They've got this uh, technology that's very comfortable, very accessible. It's very simple uh, aesthetic silhouettes. You know, very simple, so I don't think you can really go wrong with these. I haven't tried them myself personally. I'm tempted to just see what all the fuss I'm, is about. I'm really tempted as well, but yeah. um, not not there quite yet. From, um, from like a trending standpoint, like among sneakerheads and streetwear heads, I don't think they're like they're there. But for the mainstream market, yeah, they're like the thing. Yeah, you okay. Know, in the same way, maybe like Ultra Boosts were. Um, when they fell out of hype with sneakerheads, like they yeah, were still really yeah, popular yeah, yeah. with still the sales must be else. amazing still, but yeah, yeah. With, outside the niche, it's it's yeah. popping. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, sure. So still in, and then SB Dunks, SB Dunk Low, I guess here. Yeah, uh, again, it depends on the colorway. SB Dunks are going nowhere. Uh, yeah, it's it's still a uh, classic shoe. The the reason I think SBs aren't going anywhere is because of the price point. They are 100%. such yeah, a great price point. They've gone up a little bit. They used to be around 100 pounds. Uh, you know, some of the GR pairs or the non sort of exclusive pairs are a little bit more expensive around 120, but it's just simple shoe. They're comfortable, easy to wear, easy to style, and importantly, really well priced. I agree. They're very, very comfy. And um, they're probably, one, they're probably the, my favorite low top kind of silhouette. They're great. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they've got such a core community behind it from both. Yeah both multiple sports. So. I mean, bro, the older model SBs go for nuts money these yeah, days. Yeah, man. You know? yeah. And I can remember a time when a lot of SBs would just go on sale. 
Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there watching that have been in the game for a long time can remember when even a lot of hyped up pairs like you know, Newcastles or even like Lobsters, Red yeah, Lobsters yeah. back in the day weren't selling out straight away and commanding big resale. Um, same with like the What The Dunks. I can remember looking at What The Dunks back in like 2014, 2015, because I was really into What The Shoes. Yeah. And there were pairs floating around, you know, like brand new for like, you know, 700 pounds, 800 pounds, 1,000 pounds. And at that moment, I was like, that's way, that's crazy money. But yeah. you look at them now, yeah. bro, like 10 grand for like a brand new pair in a, in a, in a heat size. So yeah. yeah, SBs have got so much going for them. I don't think they're going anywhere. Yeah, their, their collaboration is also unmatched. Jordan, bro, sneaking on. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much for having me, Jack. It's great to see you, what, bro. What, you got, uh, what have you got planned next, man? Like, what's, what's, What can people expect next from Sneakonomics? Yeah, look, I'm I'm still out here making my content. I'm still active on uh, TikTok. I'm still active on IG, trying to make some interesting videos, whether it's talking about you know, what's going on, news, uh, trying to continue to come up with some fun ways to you know poke fun at the sneaker community. Yes. And, uh, you know, have a little bit of a laugh at uh, yours, mine, our uh, expense. Yes. And yeah, I'm still active in the YouTube game as well. Really enjoying producing content for my YouTube channel. Yeah, And man. trying to uh, produce a few videos each week. And just, yeah, continuing to enjoy the culture, man. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And it keeps me busy. It keeps me focused. And it's, yeah, just really enjoyable. So that's what's nice. up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. The Hype Report drops every Monday, 6 p.m. If you are listening on Spotify, give the little heart thing a little like, YouTube like, subscribe, and uh, we will see you in the next one.